Good day and welcome to One Man and His Dog, an edited highlights playthrough of DDO. Meet Watney the Wabbid and his pet wolf, Fenton. Watney is a druid. He's a bit like a cleric, except that he talks to trees. He has reasonable combat ability, a pet, a smattering of nature themed spells, including the ability to summon yet more animals. Um, and finally, the ability to uh, turn into various creatures. Currently, just a wolf, but his repertoire will increase as his levels. His main, as he levels, his main downside is an is an inability to find or disarm traps. At this point in the game, oh God, that looks a bit weird. At this point in the game, I've. Uh, done all the village quests and I'm now off to explore Corsos proper. I'll be showing you the explorer spots and the rare spot points, as well as if any tricky or interesting areas in the quests themselves. As we go through the game, quests will be initially attempted on Elite. Um, something to know about being in animal form is that, unlike the tabletop game, you can do it as long as you want, um, for as many times a day as you want, as many times a rest as our economy works in DDO. And when in anim animal form, you get special spells that are tied to a specific form. So anyway, on with the tour. Now, into Corsos, we, uh, we can pick up a quest here, and then it's down the hill to hit a few explorer areas. Blah, blah, blah. Then just straight down the hill, into the water. Look at the little doggy swim. Now we have an explorer point here on the quest door. That's the takedown move, which trips. Um, you notice my my Fenton has a taunt ability. So how I'm going to be playing this is Rodney will be more about sneak attacks and flanking, where Fenton will go and make friends. Where's Fenton? Fenton's there. I don't know where my summoned wolf has gone. Because he's a summon, he's a bit thick, so we'll let, just let him catch up automatically. Boing, boing. <laughs> that Blood Moon Frenzy is a special... It's an enhancement I have picked up. <laughs> and at this next lot we'll show you one of the spells. Oh, oh no, I don't have it memorized. <laughs> I was going to show you one for self, but I don't have it memorized. Which was Tangle, which makes a list, which makes a sort of slowing field. It would be quite good for these sort of areas. At the moment, I don't have a full cure. At the moment, I don't have a full cure ability. Get that next level when I next explorer spot is in here. We have a little shrine. Now up here we have one of the rares, and I believe another explorer. I don't, it doesn't look like the rare is there, though, which is a shame. Yeah, so up keep close tabs on the comings and goings of the Corthos village citizens from this overlook. Yeah, so up here we should have a rare Sahaugin. But he's not there, so we'll move on. Now down this river, I believe, is yet another one. Now when you're in wolf form, you get the special ability of any weapons you have um, wielded. In this case, I have a body feeder scimitar. So whilst I'm doing the damage of the wolf form, I'm getting the special ab ability of the body feeder. Okay, here we are. Another rare area. Sorry, another explorer spot. Oh god, oh god, Fenton, no, come back. 
Actually, Fenton is remarkably well behaved. It's a prob the problem is uh, the normal wolf guy. from this strategic lookout. Right, that's another spot. Okay, down here we've got both an explorer and a potential rare. which rare is a red named Ice Mephit. Who, again, doesn't actually appear to be here. Oh, come on. Guys, it's not difficult. I'm trying to show you all off and you aren't here. But yeah, down here, this, there's both an explorer <coughs> and another quest store and a shrine. Now, as this is a starter area, they're pretty generous with shrines. Most of the explorer areas don't have this many. Missions and explorer spots. Now the red robed guys cast spells, they should generally be your first target. Right, and that's back this is back to Corsos. Okay, here we have a little camp and a vendor, which is also an explorer spot. This path should be the way should be Misery's Peak itself. Not so much called, not so much named because it's a brutal, unforgiving mountain, but because it's a bloody tedious mission, which uh, I will spare you from the uh, true horror off. But anyway, this mission doesn't actually unlock until we've completed the other island mission, so we'll be going back there later. Now down on these ice flows ahead of us is yet another potential rare. Let's hope this one's in. Ah, looks like we're in. Citric. Civic. Sikik. The ice spider. So we're going to buff up. So we're going to heal. We're going to heal. Now, we, whilst we can cast spells in wolf form, their cooldown is increased and compared to casting them in human form. At this level, the named encounters aren't really much of a threat. But anyway, we've got one of the three, so that's quite good. And they, I believe they have fixed loot. Plus one AC is never anything to sneeze at, so let's put that on. Our other ring is a one-off ring of water breathing, which we don't need for this mission, but will come in handy later. Ah, freezing water.
this is another explorer spot. And make sacrifices to the god of this spell. Here is another is another explorer once we've killed the rat. This entrance leads down into an ancient can of aqueduct. Oh, the, we just need to find the dilapidated aqueduct, which I that's our mission entrance. Final explorer area, the dilapidated aqueduct. We're going to do this quest first, the necromancer one. Since it doesn't really matter what order we do these in, and we're just above this. So, let's see if we can jump down without taking massive amounts of falling damage. Just about, but that's okay, because I'm going to burn all my spell points on uh, healing. 